Okay, welcome to your first chapter, audiology. This is a pretty simple, basic overview of what audiologists do. Let's see if I can get this into um, presentation view. All right, so audiology. We're going to talk about the field of audiology, the different areas that audiologists can work with, and professional organizations for audiologists. So audiology is the non-medical diagnosis of hearing loss. Um, you would visit an ear, nose, and throat doctor, or you would visit an otologist if you had an infection of your ear or if you needed surgery of your ear. But audiologists are the hearing experts. So if you have a hearing loss, you would see an audiologist, and the audiologist would help determine the cause of your hearing loss and where your hearing loss occurs. For example, in your outer ear, your middle ear, your cochlea, or your auditory nerve. Uh, audiologists, they work very closely with your nose and throat doctors, but they are not medical doctors, so they cannot prescribe medicine. They do fit hearing aids and they do fit cochlear implants and they do do assisted listening devices and they perform oral rehabilitation which we'll talk about towards the end of this class and you might decide to take the class in oral rehab. So audiologists are non-medical hearing specialists. I can compare them to optometrists. So when you um, get your contacts or when you get your glasses you see an optometrist. When you need to get medicine for your eye, you would see an ophthalmologist. So the optometrist is the non-medical treatment of vision problems, and the audiologist is the non-medical treatment of hearing problems. Right now, you need a professional doctorate to get your um, to work clinically. It used to be that you just needed a master's degree, but in 2006, they upped the criteria and you are now required to get clinical doctorate to practice. So this is the general trend of many fields. You can get an, um, physical therapy has a physical therapy doctorate. Occupational therapy now has one. Nursing has one. Pharmacy has the PharmD. And I have a feeling it won't be too long until speech pathology also requires a clinical doctorate. The reason behind the clinical doctorate was because you're um, highly skilled professionals. And by turning the requirements into a clinical doctorate, it just gives more time for you to be in school learning and more experiences in your practicums before you head out to your workplaces, for example, hospitals or nursing homes or ENT offices. So to get your clinical doctorate, your AUD, which is separate from a PhD, a PhD is a research doctorate, and that's what I have. Um, clinical doctorate, you take more classes that are clinically focused. So you would have hearing science and speech science. There are going to be classes on anatomy and physiology and enhanced anatomy and physiology. You're going to have classes about speech language pathology because audiologists do work closely with speech pathologists counseling techniques. There's a lot of electronics that the audiologist has to learn and computer programming and then diagnost diagnostic and rehabilitation services. So your first three years in graduate school for audiology is coursework. Your fourth year is like a medical residency, just like doctors have their residency. And it's equivalent to the speech language pathologist's clinical fellowship year. So it's similar to your CFY where you're going to be working under a licensed audiologist to gain enough hours so that you could work on your own professionally. Often these positions are paid or you receive some sort of stipend and there's a matching process just like with the medical profession in the third year where the students will apply to their top choices and the, um, the hospitals or the clinics will then select which students they want to work with that year. So your clinical doctorate for audiology is really three years of coursework and one year your fourth year residency. Hearing loss is growing. We have an aging population and we have a very noisy environment in which we live. 
So about 20% of Americans, or 48 million people, have some degree of hearing loss. At the age of 65, one out of three people will have a hearing loss. 60% of the people with hearing loss um, are either in the workforce or in the educational setting. So this invisible condition is rather prevalent. When I say it's an invisible condition, I mean you don't know necessarily that someone has a hearing loss. Just by looking at a person, you're not going to know they have a hearing loss. And this uh, comes up when people need to advocate for themselves because let's say we were on the subway and I saw a man on crutches. I would get up and give that man my seat because I would see the crutches. But with hearing loss, you don't see that a person has a problem. So you don't, um, you don't know offhand whether or not they're understanding what you're saying and it, makes, it can make... Um, having a conversation difficult and it can make it frustrating and hearing loss is very very common. So people in the workforce with the mildest hearing losses show little or no drop in income compared with their normal hearing peers but as the hearing loss increases so does the reduction in compensation. So Imagine you are in a very important meeting with your boss and um, your boss is telling you all these important things that you need to do, but you're not hearing your boss correctly. So because you're not hearing your boss correctly, maybe you make a mistake. So the worse you're hearing, the more it's going to affect your career unless you seek treatment. About two to three of every thousand children are hard of hearing. It is the most common birth defect. It's an estimated that 30 school children per 1,000 have hearing loss. So it's the most common birth defect at birth. And then as the child goes, you know, two, three, four, five, there are many children that gain hearing loss after they're born. So hearing loss is very common. If you become a speech pathologist in a school, I can guarantee you're going to have children with hearing loss on your caseload. Recurrent and persistent ear infections have a substantial impact on speech and language development. The number one reason children see audiologists is to rule out hearing loss as a cause of language delay. If you can't hear, you're not going to learn spoken language. Audiology is consistently reported as one of the most desirable professions by U.S. News & World Report and Time Magazine. I have both of these links posted on, web, on uh, the web link section of Dropbox. So one-on-one -on -one helping careers are among the most pleasant. And this one can offer a promise that over your career, the tools to help patients are getting better and better. So the hearing aids from the 70s and 80s are very different from the hearing aids that we have today. The technology is always improving. We'll talk about that in the semester. Um, giving someone the ability to hear is a very rewarding thing to do. Hearing is what makes us human. Our hearing, our language, our communication, it's what makes us human. Um, it wasn't our ability to you know, build fires and, you know, make tools and all that stuff. What separates us from other animals and other living things in this environment are our big brains and our big brains that were able to develop language and that language is brought through our hearing. If you can't hear, you're not going to learn language. From Time Magazine, it was ranked the number one profession. So they compared 40 occupations ranging from firefighters to university professors to parse out which of the groups was fastest growing, least stressful, and had a decent median salary. By analyzing the Bureau of Labor Statistics data, the fastest growing jobs and data from careercast.com on work-related stress, and they were able to determine which job was America's best. As it turns out, audiologists, medical professions who treat hearing and balance problems don't have it so bad. 
So the profession is expected to experience a 34% boost in jobs between 2012 and 2022. The medium salary is stable at 69000 almost 70000 The projected growth is likely a reflection of the fact that as the nation ages, it's expected our aging nation by 2050 will be doubled. They're going to need doctors that specialize in ailments that only happen as we grow old. Also, you millennials that listen to your very loud music in your earbuds are doing permanent damage that will have to be treated as you age. There are different types of audiology specialists. You could be a medical audiologist and work in hospitals, physician's office, with ear, nose, and throat doctors or nursing homes. You could be an educational audiologist and work with deaf or hearing impaired children in schools for the schools for children that have hearing loss or in mainstream schools. You would do auditory training, which we'll talk about speech reading and working on developing hearing loss prevention programs. A pediatric audiologist might fit cochlear implants or hearing aids and work in a hospital with young children. And an industrial audiologist would design hearing conservation programs, measure noise levels, and monitor employees' hearings. There are a few professional societies for audiologists. There's ASHA, the American Speech Language Hearing Association, and there's the American Academy of Audiology. So in the 1980s, um, audiologists were starting to get frustrated with ASHA. They didn't feel like they were being equally represented or fairly represented. They felt that they were being um, pushed out by speech-language pathologists. So they developed their own academy. The two, um, I guess there's a bit of a rivalry, but they do work together on important pieces of legislation. For example, a hearing aid tax credit. But um, you don't have to be a member of ASHA to practice audiology. You don't have to be a member of the American Academy of Audiology to practice audiology. You need to have your state license. Those organizations, professional organizations, are important and they help legitimize the profession, but they're not required to practice. There's also New York State Speech Language Hearing Association. There's the Alexander Graham Bell Society if you want to be an auditory verbal therapist, which is something I really recommend looking into if you're interested in working with people that have hearing loss. And we'll talk more about the AG Bell Society later in the semester. So to review, audiology is the non-medical treatment of hearing loss. They work on diagnosing the exact location of the hearing loss. If you remember from hearing science, the ear is divided into three parts, so audiologists can parse out where the hearing loss is coming from, the degree and the severity. Audiologists treat hearing loss with hearing aids, cochlear implants, or assisted listening devices. They also perform oral rehabilitation. Uh, to become an audiologist, you need to have your AUD, your clinical doctorate in audiology, which is four years, three years of coursework, one year of your externship, which oftentimes is paid. Audiology is consistently ranked as a number one profession, so it is certainly worth investigating. And Maybe after this class you'll be even more inclined to investigate it further. We do have an AUD program here at St. John's, Hofstra, and Delphi Universities where we work together. Um, we have a great cohort. My Graduate assistant Sophia, who you'll probably be interacting with, is a third-year student in the Long Island AUD Consortium. So she's part of the AUD program from St. John's. And audiologists can work in many different settings, just like speech pathologists. You can work in a medical setting. You could work in a school. You can work in a hospital. You can work in industry. There are a number of professional organizations including the American Academy of Audiology and the American Speech Language Hearing Association. You need to have state licensure to practice audiology. So I hope everybody understood this lecture well. It was pretty brief and easy. Please complete the rest of the assignments and email Sophia or me if you have any questions. Thank you.